So welcome to my rather messy um, workbench. Um, but I wanted to tell you about what I've been working on in the last couple of months. Well, a couple of weeks really, about a month. Um, a while ago I ordered these IV... Would you focus? IV25 um, VFD tubes, they're vacuum fluorescent um, display tubes and they're you're supposed to put them like in a dot matrix and then you build characters or something from that. But when I first got them, I, well, I also want to make a matrix display for them. But um, what I really wanted to do was to use them as a sort of bar graph display or battery indicator. And so what immediately came to mind is I'll just, I'll have to make a, an LED flashlight with this as a battery indicator on the side of it. And yeah. I started designing a case for it. This is the case. Um, it will house the battery in here. It's a nice big clunking switch. And it also has this big housing. This is a prototype. It has a couple of holes there. Or there. But yeah, that about that. Um, and the uh, VFD tube, it just sort of snap fits in here. I'm very happy with how that is. If it's, um, it will poke out through here and connect to the board, so it's holding like this. Um, and this is also, this is a bit worn out from being a prototype. Um, on, if it's fresh off the printer, it will fit really, really snugly. Um, yeah. Then also, so I have to peer it out with a screwdriver to get it out. Um, so next thing I wanted to, uh, think about was the, the circuit that's going to power the thing. I wanted to power it from one or more than one 18650. There's probably only room for one. Maybe I'll buy a slightly larger cell, maybe not an 18650, something, something bigger. Because there is quite a lot of space in there, but it's too narrow to fit two next to each other, and it's also not long enough to um, fit them sort of over or in series. Um, so what I'm doing is, this is the prototype for the circuit, the first prototype I built. Uh, it has an 18650 down here powering it. It just goes to a off-the-shelf boost converter module. Because the VFDs, they need a fairly high voltage of about 20, 25. This is running at that's 30 at the moment, so this is why it's very bright. It's swamping out the camera. If you look at it from where I'm standing, it's, um, it's much better. Uh, you can see the dots. Instead of just this this sort of bar, um, but it's because the voltage here is so high, um, and yeah, the the brains of the operation is here is an at tiny eighty five microcontroller with some C code on it, and I'll go over the code later because um, it does a couple of clever things um, that I'm a bit proud of. Um, yeah, that's about it for this prototype. Um, as soon as the battery discharges, this will go off in segment the segments. The first two will go down at first, then second two. Then there's only these three here on. And once the battery gets to a critical state around 3.4, 3.3 volts, um, <clears throat> it will start flashing this bottom bracket. I will not make. I will not put a cut off in. I will not make it just cut off um, because if if I have a flashlight. I really want to have the option to, well, ruin the battery. If I need, if I need the thing right now, and I don't care about losing a three, four dollar battery, um, then yeah, I'll, I'll just go for it. It's, it's a flashlight. It's possibly used in an emergency type of situation. And the worst thing would be if the thing just cut out. I, well, I'm the sort of guy who likes manual overrides, but I don't want to put a second switch on it, so it's just not going to have a cutoff. And if you want to risk it, you could drain it further, but it would be really better if you switched it off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the, the prototype. And what I'll show you next is the first uh, prototype board I made from, from this breadboard design here. So this is the prototype board, and it just consists of a board here where all the, the 
a tiny and a driver transistor and a voltage regulator and a boost converter and, and such set. This VFD tube and the COP LED. This is a, a 20 volt LED COP, uh, maximum 10 watts. I'm probably going to drive it around 5 watts because, yeah, I just, um, yeah, I don't, I, I want to conserve battery and 5 watts is really enough for flashlight. You don't need a 50 watt flashlight. You know, 5 watts should definitely enough. Um, at the moment it's it's powered from these two leads that come from my very old power supply. Um, I'm just going to simulate real quick what happens when you, do, when you drain the battery. It's at 4.2 volts at the moment. I'll just slowly turn it down to where the first segment just goes off. And second one, this is around 3.7-ish, 3.8. Um, don't know the exact values I put in the code on top of my head, but I'll probably alter them anyway. This is just to, to test it. Now the, these are lit. And crank it down further. Yeah, now it starts flashing. This is where it tells you, please stop. This is not good. Um, oh, by, by the way, the LED is disconnected at the moment because um, if I would if I would have it connected up, it just completely swamped by the camera and that would be no good at all. Um, and also, this board in the flashlight it sits on top of this like this, and it's screwed down with two standoffs. So yeah, and just look at the design of the board. Good, yeah, I'll power it down for this. Um, circuitry is actually fairly simple. Yes. Focus. Yeah, that's better. There's um, the, the boost converter board here. This is a module that you can buy. Uh, three BC547 transi transistors are the a tiny and 5 volt voltage regulator. And I'll go over the circuit in a minute. Um, yeah, on the bottom there's obviously the VFD connections. Just a couple SMD resistors. Um, here, the three SMD resistors to um, the base resistors for transistors. And here's three pull-up, 8.2 uh, kilo ohm pull-up resistors for the VFD. Um, yeah. And those get shorted out by the transistor if you if you drive them with high signal from micro. Um, this is actually not a resistor, this is just a jumper link. Um, I put that in in the prototype so I can disconnect the battery sensing and feed it with an artificial voltage to, well, a generated voltage. All voltage is artificial. No, it's not, but yeah. Um, yeah, this is the, the battery connections here. And this is the, the filament for the VFD. And that's about it on, on this board. So this is the schematic of the uh, flashlight project. And as I said, it's very simple. It comes in here with the battery and um, has two pads here for the boost converter to go out. And this is the boost converter receive. Thing. I might change the module to a, um, well, to not a module, to having the circuitry all on that on that board instead of just a piggyback board. If I ever make more than ten of them, I I'm thinking about spinning those boards um, and just having them for sale somewhere. I'm not sure. Um, maybe I'll do that. So yeah. Um, boost converter is here, battery comes in here, um, this is the tabs for the LED to come off. The LED is on as soon as the circuitry is on, the, the switch goes in between here, between the battery and this. Um, then here directly taken off the boost converter there is a 5 volt regulator, that's a bit abusive but yeah I'm only taking what a milliamp or so I can definitely get away with using just a linear regulator here instead of another boost converter. Um, 
I won't mind uh, the milli. Well, let let the milliamp drain here be 10 milliamps drain on the battery. It's a two amp hour battery. It doesn't matter at all, especially if the if the LED takes what 500 milliamps at around 20 volts. Well, or 250, depending on with what with what I go. Um, it it doesn't matter. Um, here's the the a tiny um, and on this ADC2, I'll have a sense line go out to the battery voltage and uh, p uh, pin B3 uh, at two and one or, or port depending on. Um, go out to to the transistors here and. There's just there's the pull-ups I spoke be, uh, spoke about before, so yeah, it's it's very simple, it's very minimalistic. Um, oh, also there's a resistor here. Uh, I should explain that. Um, this is just to provide a minimum load, because if I I have tons of of space on the controller left for for doing clever things, um, I might just do a thing where um, I put this to sleep every once in a while. And this is a very high value resistor just to provide some base load for this regulator so that it doesn't go crazy. Um, even if this takes what less than a microamp, as as those tinies do when you when you put them to to sleep or power down mode as they call it in data sheet. Um, yeah, the the thing that's missing here is um, I actually want to include a battery charging circuitry. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. Um, I might do it very, very simple if I'm just using a single cell um, and the user is well somewhat intelligent. You can get away with just um, using a current uh, regulated 4.2 volt source that just it doesn't go over two amps and it, it just holds 4.2 volt constant. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you don't leave it on the charger indefinitely because then it will keep charging it, it will float charging it and that's potentially very bad for the battery but if the user is halfway sensible and you tell him that just leave it on there for an hour you'll you'll be just fine or an hour or two um, yeah that is just it would be as one uh, LM317 regulator just whack it in be fine uh, I, I will probably add that or I'll do something clever and have external charging circuitry and have flashlight go in a charge station or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's it's all still being designed. Um, yeah, but I do have I don't have much space on the board, so I I won't go into I won't do something very complicated. What I also what also I think is possible just to sense the battery voltage while charging, and I have two more pins here. Um, I could also put an over well just an end of charge cutoff in. Just cut the cut the charging voltage off at four point two. Or once it's been at four point two four No that doesn't work with lithium. Well Well you'd you'd have to sense that the current has gone down to well five milliamps or so. Um, that is possible. I might do that um, since the controller is already on there. I have, I'm only using 15% of the memory of the controller. Um, that is definitely an option. So and now after we've done the schematic, let's just go over the board real quick. Um, this is not going to take long. There's not much on here. Um, yeah, controller is here. Um, it's a single-sided board. I always do single-sided for prototyping and. Well, something as simple as that, if you need two layers, or, yeah, well, <laughs> if you need two sides to do that, you're, you're not doing it right, honestly. Um, also, two jumper links, that's just fine. I could probably route it differently, but I'm fairly happy with that. Mm, the only thing I'm not 100% happy with is going through here and here, but on the prototypes, it works out very well, uh, I I uh, assembled two of the prototype boards, and even with a bit of sloppy soldering, I, I'd never had any problems with that. Um, yeah. What else? This is where the uh, where the boost converter sits on a little piggyback board. Um, 
7805, I choose to, to lay it down on the board and screw it to this. First of all, it dissipates a bit of the heat away, not that the thing is really heating up too much um, with the with the 5 milliamp load, <laughs> but um, yeah, just ha don't have it flying around inside the flashlight. It's this is potentially a, a case where it's just a flashlight, you're going to drop it. Um, and don't have it rattling loose, just screw it down, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, this is the current limiting resistor for the LED. I'm also, I have some spare pins on the controller. I think I'm thinking about making this a transistor and um, PWMing the LED, which uh, would conserve power better than just having a resistor. And I think you can get away with it if you put some minimal I mean the 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 leads to the to the LED they have resistance. You have a minimum resistance and that will limit the current somewhat. You can just pulse it. If you're careful you can you can get away with that. Although it is a bit chunky. Oh, I'm not sure. I think I'll just leave it at the resistor. Um yeah. What else? Um, yeah, there is some space on the board for some surface mount components um, for for charging circuitry. I could put something down here, although I'll probably want to have the uh, the mounting holes that hold the two boards together here and here. Um, yeah, I uh, could also just if it's a flat pack or flat package, I could just put it under the boost boost converter, that should work out fairly well. Or, or down here, there's also a bit of space down here. I'm not sure. The future will tell. So, last but not least, um, let's look at a code that I half wrote, half copied somewhere else. Um, I'd uh, definitely gave credit to the people who wrote um, mostly the uh, clever stuff down here, which we come later to, um, why it's saying a uh, um, um, rolling rolling average. Um, I I wouldn't have thought of that, so it's pretty clever. Um, first of all, we we need to 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 use the ADC. Um, we need to shift a couple bits around. Um, just activate the ADC, set the prescaler, um, be sure that we only want to use 8 bits and stuff. And this is where, where the main code lives. Um, here this is just a set the data direction register, so um, the, the right pins are outputs and the right pins are inputs. Then we'll just initialize the ADC with this up here and take a, a rolling average which is this code. Um, interesting thing about the AVR controllers is um, there's the ADC uh, SRAA. Um, I, don't, I don't know the name for the, for the bit um but it's basically it's a it's a it's a bit that it goes high when the uh ADC conversion is complete so after 25 clock cycles and you can use that to just wait till it's complete start taking the next sample wait till it's complete start taking the next sample like this um also um this the ADSC this will go to zero so um once the the conversion is complete, so you set it to one. Check. Oh, is this ha is this one? Is this zero? Yeah, I'm done. And then you go to um, uh, taking the the floating average thingy. And yeah, that's just about it. This uh, over here, it just converts it to to uh, zero to five volts with with eight bit values. And then this down here is just a. Uh, this is just very boring. If 
this light this segment, if this light this segment, if this light this segment, if this then blink, and then you're done. Um, I'll probably add some more code to um, uh, for for battery uh, management or something. Since yeah, this is a very simple program to this point. Um, yeah, there's there's plenty of space in the controller. And I'll come I'll come back to this once I get the, the prototypes boards all made. I'll probably get them manufactured. So I'll have to wait uh, a couple of weeks. But yeah, this is this is a very nice project. It's been very entertaining to me. Um yeah. And I, I also learned a lot. Um since I've gone from uh from from the Arduino language C plus plus thingy to back to writing just straight C. Um, which is actually sort of the way I started. Well, I started with BASIC on, on AVR, but then I had a very, very brief assembler phase, and then I just wrote straight C, and then I sort of got into Arduino, and now I'm back to, to just doing C, because it's just... Uh, it's so much tidier and, and neater, and I, I like being closer to the hardware than the Arduino thing uh, allows you to do. So yeah, I'll get back to this once I <laughs> have some progress to report.